Welcome into Attacking Third, where we talk about women's soccer around the world. I'm Jenny Chu, alongside Lisa Carlin, Jordan Angeli, and Darian Jenkins. We are all back. Happy Monday. It has been a great week. Welcome back. Thank you. We've Thank missed you. you, Jenny. I was in Italy and Turkey, and the most important part of my whole trip was that I went to the derby between the two Milan teams, Inter Milan and AC Milan. 75,000 people. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Amazing. A 5-1 to one Inter Milan win, and my boyfriend is a diehard, so it was, it was happy. Happy days. It was happy. It was a happy good day. way to end the trip. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it was incredible. Um, but an exciting week in NWSL action as we get closer and closer to playoffs. I think there's only three matches left. We're at the very end, and this is the tightest race ever. Yeah, this is one of the tightest that we've seen in the NWSL because with three matches left, not a single team has clinched the playoffs, <laughs> and not a single team has been eliminated from the playoffs. I mean, this... Uh, this is so rare. It, it it's feels so like rare. who wants to win? I know. You know, like by this time we we see a team who separates themselves or one that is, you know, just struggling to get wins. But over the weekend, we see results for those teams who are at the bottom <laughs> of the table. They're saying, no, we're not going to go out easy. Last year, it was the middle of the pack that was right. really tight. Mm -hmm. But this year, I think it's 11 points from top to bottom. 11 point classic yeah. NWSL so <laughs> chaos. Let's go. I love what's it. Gonna happen. Yeah. I love it. Very, okay, we're going to get deeper into the NWSL in the second block, but first, let's get straight into the news where Gotham FC, Mitch Purse, and Angel City's M.A. Vagnola have been added to the U.S. Women's National Team roster for their friendlies against South Africa. They're going to be replacing Rose Lavelle and Kelly O'Hara, respectively. Let's go ahead and start with Midge Purse, who, by the way, it's her birthday today. Three oh. goals and two assists in nine matches. I mean, what do we think about her call-up? This is obviously not her first call-up with the national team. Well, happy birthday, first yeah. and foremost. <laughs> it feels like the right timing, and we've seen Midge do this a couple of times now. Doesn't make the World Cup roster and was really on the bubble there. This one really due to an injury that she just couldn't get back healthy for in time. It feels like the right next call up to give her a chance because she has been doing really well at Gotham as of late. She is not scoring as many goals, I think, as we would expect her to be, but she's contributing. She's always a danger. The thing I love about Midge is she counts on herself every time. She gets in the attacking third, and you know that she's going to figure out a way to create something for herself. Um, it, it's exactly what you want out of an attacking player. Yeah, even Midge this past weekend in the NWSL against Angel City just going at the defenders, mm -hmm. just finding a 1v1 situation, attacking the front foot of the defender, going at mm -hmm. them. Her confidence hasn't faltered, and that's something that could happen if you don't make a World Cup roster. And Jordan makes a good point that she's done this before where she, she gets into a rut or an injury where she can't make those national team call-ups, but she's been at the international level She's played for the senior national team a number of times, the 23 caps, I believe. So this is par for the course for her. I'm hoping that she can get into this camp against South Africa, play significant minutes, and then make a name for herself ahead of a really big Olympics for the U.S. Absolutely. Really excited for Mitch to be called in. Obviously, Kelly O'Hara and Roosevelt going out with injuries. Um, my understanding from the press release is that Roosevelt will be there, but rehabbing with the team instead of playing. Um, for M.A. Vignola, this is her first women's national team call-up in her second full season in NWSL. She has two goals in 16 matches as a defender. Yeah, I love it. I think this is a really good call-up for her. And, again, adds to the narrative of this national team bringing in young talent, developing these players, having a new identity. Um, I think she's going to be a really good fit, and I hope she gets some minutes potentially just to kind of get her feet wet um, and – gel into this back line that we know can change a yeah. lot moving forward, especially with the Olympics coming up. It, she's so athletic and attacking minded. Yeah. I think it'll be good. I think her and Foxy actually would be an interesting duo mm. to have in the back line as outside backs. Yeah. She started the last four games for Angel City. They've been on a run undefeated in 11. She's had um, a number of uh, interceptions, 12 interceptions for her over the year. And that tells me, and when you watch her play, she is aggressive in trying yeah. to cut those passes out. And then she can go on a long, lengthy dribble, yes. getting into the attack. <laughs> she is has so many tendencies of uh, an attacking player. And that's exactly what this U.S. Women's National Team wants, is one of those players who can do both things. A good defender, solid, but can contribute to the attack as well. So congratulations to her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first match uh, will be in 
in Cincinnati against South Africa on September 21st. So we'll get to see that very, very soon. And we move to Spain now, where RFEF has issued an ultimatum to the striking Spanish national team players in response to their refusal to return to the national team until further structural changes were made within the federation. The federation requested that the players provide the names of the people that they want removed and committed to removing those names within a month. Let's first react to that news because that may be what exactly we wanted to hear was that they were going to remove the people that they wanted removed. Jordan? I feel like the steps are trying to be made by Spain. It feels like the month seems like a strange thing, but it is hard to make decisions right away that are impacted because you have to cl collaborate all of the players and what, who they think. But we were sitting here Friday saying, okay, yeah. what's it going to take? What, who needs to go? And now they're getting the opportunity to say who needs to go. So I kind of feel like that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I, I think it is a step in the right direction for what the Spanish players want. But the fact that the Federation is just like, okay, give us a list and we're going to fire these people. Yeah. What? I, like yeah. that's, it's, it, it does, doesn't, it falls in perfect line with nothing makes that. sense. Yeah, they just asked for that. So it feels like, Who's in control of this? Yeah. Where is it going? I think that's the issue, though. I think this federation is still trying to control this narrative in some way. An ultimatum to get called into camp, and the players are unaware that they were getting called mm -hmm. in, and like at the spur of the moment, they're supposed to be there. It's nothing makes sense, and I think yeah. it's intentional of the federation to keep it kind of smoky, and everyone's really unsure. Of, well, what's where are we moving? Why are we doing this a month? What's, what's so, happening? Exactly. So that happened yesterday, Darian. Yeah. And then today, uh, newly appointed coach Monse Tomei announced her first squad, which includes Mapi Leon and Patrick Guijarro, which both of them refused to make themselves available for selection for the World Cup. So that was interesting to see their names in there. Um, and then the idea that they were told this news and then told this is the national team, apparently, uh, reportedly, without any knowledge that they were getting called into the camp after they had refused to come back until structural changes were made. It seems like we don't really understand exactly who's in charge, what's going on. Um, Monse Tomei spoke in a press conference addressing the situation. Jenny Hermoso is not a part of this call-up, uh, while other players that have been a part of this whole situation are. And that feels like they're trying to ostracize her a little bit. Mm -hmm. They claim it's protecting her, but I don't really know if I would feel that way in that situation when all my teammates who have been side by side with me in a fight have now been called into somewhere where I can't go, and well, they we, can now talk about it, and I'm not a part of it. I don't know. It all feels like a big smoke screen. Like, we yeah. just, we legitimately do not understand or know what's going on. So imagine how these players feel that. Yeah. There's no direction, no real, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I think the I biggest question them. is, are they going to go into the camp now? Because we're not sure. We'll we've see now tomorrow, seen, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've seen that they've been called in, but how do the players react? I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen them continuously make their needs you know, known. Um, so that'll be interesting, and we'll, we'll continue to follow that story. They're going to play Sweden on Friday and Switzerland on the 26th. When we come back, we're going to talk a closer look at the action from this weekend's NWSL games, including Esther Gonzalez making a huge impact in her home debut. Dabinia sizing this up, Dabinia! Oh my goodness! A touch of class from a world-class star! Klingenberg with that second ball though, looking for Sinclair, here's Weaver, yes! Morgan Weaver! We saw it there in that uh, recording. I mean, all of the great goals. We saw Esther Gonzalez having a great weekend. Morvin Weger scoring a goal. Debinha with her dance after her golazo. <laughs> uh, let's talk through the games this weekend. Darian, start us off with Esther Gonzalez making an absolute impact in Gotham against Washington Spirit. I wish you all could have been there with me. The <laughs> atmosphere was so great at this game, and Esther showed out. She was so good. Um, she just had so much energy, and you watch her little nuances with her movement mm. and always wanting to get on the ball. She's constantly checking her shoulder, and it paid off. Two goals at the end we thought she was going to have a hat trick but yeah her first goal just came from her being tenacious she was buzzing around the box she stayed gritty stayed hungry stayed on sides um, and uh, ultimately picked the ball off tried to set somebody else up there's a couple ricochets and she was able to get the first goal and then right off of kickoff turnover Lynn <laughs> freaking Williams <laughs> did you guys see how fast that girl is yeah. Lynn Williams oh oh here we have the first goal 
Um, like I said, Esther picks off a ball, um, a couple ricochets, and a little sleepy on Spirit's back line. Nobody tracks her, but Esther stays alive the whole time and is able to get the finish. Just watch her movement after she lays this ball off and how she jumps back on. She's waiting for the ball to pop out, and what do you know? Goals of gold. Thank you very much. Such a great finish, I know. Love it. The atmosphere was crazy at Red Bull Arena. And then here, right off of kickoff, Lynn Williams puts her jets on. Love to see that. And then Esther just staying hungry again on goal with a cheeky finish with the outside toe. of her left oh, foot. Oh, is it outside? I thought it was a toe poke oh, here. Oh, I don't know. You're right, toe Ooh, poke. Well, you're you're right, toe you're right. Poke. I do too. But such a cheeky finish, and she's able to get the second goal right off the bat. Um, I Gotham, it was crazy in that stadium. I, I can't say it enough. It was such good energy, and I think this is just the beginning of her getting so many more goals the last three games. I remember sitting here talking about Esther Gonzalez and in those games for Spain in the World Cup and how good she was at holding the ball up. Mm -hmm. And when they had her in at the nine, it was a completely different team because Hermoso could go into the midfield. It just felt different. And immediately, she is that player here yeah. for Gotham. I like how she was working with Delaney Sheehan, mm -hmm. who I, I don't think Sheehan gets enough love for the, some of the I things agree. that she does for this Gotham squad. She has come in and absolutely captured the middle of the field. She's so creative. Uh, it was a decisive win mm -hmm. against the Spirit and one that Gotham needed to get, boost them, but also puts the Spirit in a, an interesting place. Yeah, back-to-back -back goals for, yeah. for Esther Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. I know the time codes weren't on those highlights, but five minutes apart, yeah. not even, basically, between them. It was impressive. Welcome to the NWSL. Yes, yes, right. Right. We're to get started in here. Um, Lisa, will you take us through San Diego Wave and Kansas City? Some good action there. This was great action. Top of the table battle to the mm -hmm. bottom of the table because San Diego was sitting number one and Kansas City was number 12 heading into this weekend. But everyone knows that that means nothing for Kansas City <laughs> because they understand exactly as uh, we take a look at oh. some of these Angel City highlights. We're going to switch here. We're, 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 gonna, we're now Angel talking City. Angel City because Allie Riley gets on the board. Uh, it went to VAR potential offside but it comes back to it there's the second goal for Chicago this match in Chicago at SeatGeek Stadium had all of the goals 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 between these sides June Endo ultimately getting the response for Angel City and then Shayna Matthews yeah she checks into the match mm -hmm. and then ends up getting that goal it ends in a 2-2 draw but chaos all over Chicago love it goals 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 and Shayna Matthews with that, that last goal, I think, was so good for um, Chicago. She was able to pick the ball off. It was kind of scrappy. It lost a bad giveaway by Angel City, and then she just kind of muscled everybody off and was able to get the finish, and you love to see her celebration. And I think going into this next camp, too, what a great way for her to feel confident going in and playing against Canada coming up. Yeah, good that's game. a good point. What was the celebration? It's time. Yeah, it's, it's time it's to time. Uh, I think it's interesting. Cook now has three goals in the last two games against Angel City. She is their cheat code for this Chicago squad. And Chicago is the first time their new owners were in the stadium. And you could sense that there's a different fight within this team mm -hmm. for the last couple of games. They're feeling reinvigorated. They get a draw at home against an Angel City squad who hasn't um, lost. This is 11 games now undefeated. They are pushing for the playoffs. This is going to be a really interesting to see if Angel City makes that last move. I remember sitting over here <laughs> saying they're not going to make it, Darren. Yeah, I, I might be changing my tune now. <laughs> no, no, no. They were good. And I, we said last week, too, not sure who's going to take this. And this matchup, I think, is so good because Chicago is – they've had a rough season. But against Angel City, they really show up, turn yeah. out. This is an example of that, and I love your point of with the new ownership, I think they just gave them fresh new energy mm -hmm. to actually feel positive going into games and not this weight that they've been carrying around. So it's great to see, and I'm happy for the players. They got a result. You guys were talking about Shayna Matthews earlier, and I heard on the call something about her family and her kids live in Nashville, and she went to go play for Chicago, um, but that's the best thing for her family and her career. Do you, do you guys know about this story? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, to see her finally like getting some success here and ahead of the camp is just awesome. Yeah, and just shows you the, the power moms in this yes. league. She has three children, I know. Uh, young children, and uh, but also her husband is so supportive. He was a professional football player, knows that she loves to go and do what she wants to do. So um, it's nice to have that support, but also for her to have 
this reinvigorated career mm -hmm. after having three children. So go on, Shayna. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about the Portland Thorns against O.L. Reign, what an awesome thing, you know, just that rivalry itself. And I, and I worked for the Portland Thorns for a while, so I know how incredible that is. Morgan Reaver scoring three yeah. matches in a row. Cascadia is always so much fun. And this is the first goal here. Both goals actually off of set pieces, but Portland was so good in dynamic and attack. This is Coffee to Rodriguez. And then here's Ina Sagita tapping this one in. This is a second wave off of a corner kick. It's the second goal. How about this from Morgan Weaver? Not just a impeccable volley into the side netting, but then where are the away fans? Well, I know exactly where they are. <laughs> yeah. I go straight to OL Rain fans who are sitting in the corner of Providence Park, <laughs> nice and tucked away. And she says it's all for the badge. Uh, I know Morgan Weaver doesn't have like the variety of celebrations we see some from other people, <laughs> but I gotta say, uh, her facial expressions it's when so she good. scores are probably <laughs> some of my favorite. <laughs> in the intensity that she uh, brings, and, and, and she we've needs gotten to. to see them so much. That's three yeah. goals in three straight games for her, and she needs to. Yeah, mm -hmm. but she has been great over. You know, actually shocked she's not. I, I'm sure she will get a call in after this next camp, um, it, for the South Africa camp into um, the next one because she's been excellent over the last two years. To watch her progress, her ability in the way that Portland play, it's almost this offset. 4-3-3, so they isolate her on the left. They bring Sagita in centrally, so it's in this really like offset diamond, and they just leave Morgan Weaver, and they say, all right, when you get the ball, get after it, Do and boy, thing. does she. Yeah, she's a really impressive player, and we keep saying she keeps growing and growing and just mm -hmm. becoming more impressive with how even that finish. I don't think last year we saw Morgan Weaver finish a great volley like that mm -hmm. um, and keep it, keep it under the crossbar, so it's good to see her grow and Love the celebration too. It's yeah. contagious. It makes me want to be like, ah, oh. oh, it's, it's the facial expressions. You're right. I like that you said she kept it under the crossbar. She had a chance just a few minutes before she knocked away that second goal for Portland. That was just ricocheted over. Yeah. off the crossbar. Oh, yeah. It yes. was like a bullet. And she, she stayed persistent. Hole. It was like 60 seconds before yeah. she ended yeah. up getting Good. the goal. So she was chomping at the bit. Oh, it's great to see that from her. Uh, sending a wave against Kansas City, Lisa. Dabinia's goal, I could watch on replay time and time and time again. Unreal. This is a dream start for Dabinia and for Kansas City because in the third minute she receives it and there's not a single player stepping for San Diego yeah. to get this. I mean, how beautiful is that? And then Kansas City keeps it alive. Kristen Hamilton, she gets on the board. In the opening 25 minutes, it's 2-0. Here's the questionable call. It's Stina Balistager, the defender for Kansas City. She goes in hard against Alex Morgan. No whistle, no card, nothing on the field that is done to it. It goes to VAR, and then this handball goes to VAR, no whistle, nothing happens there either. San Diego does ultimately get one back. It's Sierra Engie uh, right there. You see her little toe poke as she falls to the ground, and Kansas City ends up beating the number one team in the NWSL two to one, but a number of questionable calls throughout this game. Penalty. Let's talk yeah. through it, yes, because Alex Morgan had a tweet right after saying, hey, I watched it back, and what in the world? How is that not a call? She said something about not being able to walk the next day if that was the case. Yeah, I, Alex Morgan is one, she, she knows that she's going to get tackled when she gets the ball, mm -hmm. uh, so she's very aware of her surroundings. I think checking her shoulder, seeing what's coming, and, and she saw the challenge coming. Luckily for her, she, she said something about how she popped up. She she didn't plant her leg in that time. So um, good for Alex, but that's a pen for me. Yeah. What makes it a penalty for you? I don't think she first, I, I think when she initially get, goes into the tackle, she does not get the ball. I think she gets Alex's leg first, mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And then the, some of the ball gets caught underneath, underneath Ball Sagers leg there and then it comes, so it looks like she got the ball initially, but no, not to, I don't think she gets it initially. No, it's a pen, I, and this I, is a handball. I agree. I think it. I think it should have been a pen because if you look at where the ball is when she comes up, it's directly underneath her. The ball's yeah. not in front of her feet or in front yeah. of the leg where she was trying to tackle exactly. Alex Morgan from. She so, kind of happens to get it, not yeah. really what she was going for. That's a good for. word. Yeah, yeah. and if Alex it. hadn't jumped out of it, it oh. would have. Yeah, if she didn't see that coming and try to kind of break the tackle, it mm. it would have been bad. Yeah, it gave mm -hmm. me chills, and I agree. Handball. 
hundred percent. Yeah, the second one was obvious on uh, watching it live because you can see Kate Del Fava as the ball comes in to hit her. Her left arm kind of flails mm -hmm. behind her body as if I don't know, it just smacked a ball. And yeah, the ball and changed changed the I don't know. Because <laughs> it did. But on all of the replays and in the VAR, there wasn't a clear and obvious view of it. So wow. I mean, that's probably why it didn't go into review or anything. I'm sure we'll hear from Pro about everything that happened there this weekend. All right, we move on to Orlando Pride against North Carolina Courage. Lisa? Yeah, this game was a, a lot because there were some up upsets this weekend. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought North Carolina Courage being the Challenge Cup champions that they would just continue to ride this wave. Allie Watt gets the fastest goal in Orlando Pride history just 39 seconds into this match. And Orlando stayed on the front foot. 32nd minute. Take a look at this. Wide open. Where's the defense? I don't know why Fox doesn't What's slide happening? over there. It was really confusing to me in that moment. It was it's something odd. about their, their ability to counterattack that they're just quicker I feel like yeah I mean they were it, throughout this match it, North Carolina had disconnect in their defensive abilities they do get one back in the 52nd minutes uh, Manaka mm -hmm. the 19 year old she gets another goal it, it's she has really stepped into this league and into the way Sean Nahas and North Carolina is playing and made a very seamless transition which is really hard to do at the end of a season when you're playing in Challenge Cup semis and Cup finals and now you've got three matches left and you have to show up in this game but I, I like this win for Orlando and I'm happy for Allie Watt to get on the board so quickly. Oh me too! <laughs> right, Gurley's got the win! You know no, what? No. We've been talking about how Allie Watt always comes off the bench, you know, more than usual and now she gets the start and immediately shows her impact in 30 Nine seconds, Lisa. Yeah, I think the coolest thing about this, there was an, a hydration break in the middle of this game as well, and that's when Orlando's second goal came as well. So the the restarts for them, whether it was the start of the game or the halftime, they were focused, laser focused, to be able to move in transition and, and find the back of the net. All right, Darian, your Orlando girlies, tell me your excitement. Oh, I love it, and I love seeing Allie Watt. You're right, we have talked about her a, a bunch of times. Like, how is she not starting with her speed, her 1v1 ability, her defensive work rate that she has, and I'm glad. I think she had a chip on her shoulder and came in and was like, this is why I should play. <laughs> so I'm hyped for her, and it was a great team goal. And did you guys see the highlight of Marta yes. in the midfield? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh my. How did she get out of that? How did she get out of it? It's love to see like it. like a straight I, jacket. She's like, <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. But I'm like, so <laughs> calm and cool about it. it it's great. But, um, yeah, great to see Pride get the win, I think. Again, goes to the NW, like testament to the NWSL. You never know what's going to happen. Crazy. Three yeah. games left. The table is just so tight, like we talked about. It's, it's incredible to see. We're going to hear from Canada and Chicago Red Stars, Bianca St. George, after a quick break. Welcome back to Attacking Third. Last week, Box to Box spoke to Bianca St. George about being on the national team, NWSL playoffs, and she spoke in depth about overcoming a very difficult period in her life. Take a look. We're now so excited to be joined by Bianca St. George of the Chicago Red Stars. And we want to just begin by congratulating you on your Canadian national team call up for the Olympic qualifiers against Jamaica. And I just want you to expand on it a little bit for me because this is another opportunity for you and kind of a full circle moment to be back here again. So first of all, congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. Thank you for the recognition. And also thank you for showing me those goals. It's always fun to watch those again. Um, it means so much to be back with the national team. It's a goal that a lot of players look forward to achieving. So getting called up is a huge privilege and opportunity, but especially it's fun to be reunited with my Canadian teammates because we play against each other all year. So to come back together, to be grounded in our roots is always a privilege to have. So very excited. And yeah, thank you for uh, the recognition. Bianca, you suffered a knee injury that really delayed in that WSL debut, but yet you chose to do something inspirational through that recovery process. What inspired you to do that through your social media and different platforms? I had a huge epiphany while I was going through the injury. Athletes are more than athletes. And we put so much of our self-worth between what we perform and our impact within our sport but we are so much more than that. And I think a lot of athletes need to recognize their self-worth and their value outside of their sports. So 
that was just an opportunity for me to realize that I was more to work on myself, to self-develop, to recognize what are my strengths and skills and how I can contribute to the world off the pitch. So, um, yeah, I feel that I was inspired through this process, but I want people to recognize that they can be inspired as well and they can go through the same thing as well. That's such an incredible statement, and I completely agree with what you're saying from the standpoint of when you are an athlete, there is so much emphasis put on your sport and identifying yourself kind of by that sport. Oftentimes, it's it's your friend groups, it's, it's everything that you know, your training, everything that you do, what you're eating, all of it kind of goes into, okay, I'm an athlete. But then it, you kind of lose sight of who you are outside of that, and, and when you're faced with real adversity, it can really test your mental health as well as your physical recovery as well when you're going through that process. Did you have a moment, you, you mentioned this epiphany, but were you going through the emotions as well when you were dealing with the injuries and, and did this help you to kind of process it in a healthy way? Yes, I have gone through a roller coaster of emotions to a point where I didn't recognize myself anymore. And I was at a point in my life where I was almost desperate where I was like, you either go down the rabbit hole and you never come out or you take responsibility of where you're at and you make a change about it. I feel like my mental health was what suffered the most out of all the physical health that I was going through. You know, I didn't recognize my anymore. I felt helpless, but and thinking through, I realized that no one was out there to save me and I had to take responsibility of my life. So taking the steps to get help, to do the internal work, the shadow work, to recognize why I was putting so much self-worth into my sport was all questions I was asking myself. And at the end of the day, going through those hardship brought me to where I was today. So I'm extremely grateful I went through those hard times, mm -hmm. but to whoever's going through those times that are similar to mine, I want them to know that they really aren't alone. You have to reach out. Isolating yourself will not help you. People are willing to help you and connect with you if you just voice your concerns and voice your thoughts and voice the fact that you feel alone. So I feel like I went through this journey for a purpose and it was to recognize that I need to help others recognize that they're in the same spot that I was and that they can get out of it. So it's, it's all good things at the end of the day. It's all about perspective and mindset and I want people to feel empowered by that. It's, it's very inspiring to hear you talk about it. And, and you mentioned something saying, you know, you realized like no one was going to save you. You kind of needed to save yourself, but also the importance of reaching out to people when you might need some extra help. Was there anyone that you leaned on during this time that, that kind of helped give you a different perspective or just comfort that you needed during the adversity you were facing? It's important to reach out to professionals. And I know a lot of people feel very distant from that but i think that it was really hard for me to reach out to the people that were close to me which sounds so counterintuitive you think that the people that are closest to you are the people that you need to reach out first but sometimes you feel very vulnerable and you feel like you're a burden and it's all normal to feel those ways and to know that there are professionals out there that are ready to listen and that you have a fresh uh, page with them that you can be vulnerable without any judgment that gives you the courage to then reach out to the people that are close to you so take the first step use the resources that are to you and then you always have yourself you can come to yourself sometimes you feel like um you can't trust yourself but you know taking those little steps of people that you love afterwards and then create that connection Bianca, you mentioned resources. You grew up on a farm, yet you have traveled the globe, been to places all around the world. What's your messages to young girls and young women who have the aspirations, but don't have the opportunities or resources to achieve their dream just yet? That's a really good question. Like you said, I grew up on a farm. I didn't grow up with all the opportunities in front of me. All I could control was what was within my control. So having a list of the things that you can control, your effort, reaching out to people, people, building your character, building strong values. Literally the best advice I would give to people that are young and want to make something out of themselves is to develop their personal brand. And I don't say that to be that entrepreneurship mindset, mm -hmm. but really this is the future. You are so unique. 
you have a story and the world is there for you to listen. You need to go out there and share your story because people will connect. And at the end of the day, you want to create that connection with people. You want to find your people. So as much as you think that your story doesn't matter, it does matter. It is unique to you. You are special and the world needs more of you. So that would be my message. Do you feel like as you've progressed through your career, that's that's more of a new thing, this, this sharing your own story? I know uh, oftentimes I've heard stories of, you know, when you're part of the team, it's all about the team. And it's it's I feel like recently in, in maybe somewhat of a younger generation, there is this push of like, wait, no, we want to know about the individual. We want to know what it is that you've gone through so that I can look up to you and say, OK, wait, maybe you and I have something in common. Maybe there's a path for me in seeing things from you. So does that is serve as inspiration behind why you do the posts in the way that you do and things like that with your social media? Yes, it actually does. What people don't realize is that being selfish is the best thing you can do for people sometimes. When you focus on developing yourself and becoming the best version of you, that's how you great, create a good team. A lot of people, if they put the team first, they start neglecting yourself. And when you neglect yourself, you're not you're doing a disservice to your team. So to take initiative of your own life, to start self-developing, to dig deeper and understanding yourself and understanding your qualities and your strength and developing yourself to be greater is the best gift you can give to others. So as much as we are a team sport, it starts by individually empowering each other and then coming together. That's what makes a good team. Bianca, you've been amazing. It's been awesome to have you on this show, but I've got to ask you, I'm dying to know, you come and span two cities that are food cities. Are you on team Chicago Deep Dish or Montreal Poutine? Poutine 100%. Is that even a question? <laughs> I had to ask. Next question. Poutine, poutine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bianca, thank you so much for joining the show and for sharing such incredible insight. I'm so inspired by your journey so far and just how you used your platform to really share such a positive message and inspirational message for generations in the future. So thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. When we return, we're talking about the NWSL playoff push with only three matches left. It is a very tight race. Stay with us. The NWSL playoffs are coming up very soon, but there are three more matches to be played to determine the final six teams that move forward. Uh, this is a look at the top six teams right now and the three teams that they play in the next three games. So here, uh, we're trying to determine, everyone on the staff here, who has the toughest run up. This is a look at the bottom six as well. They were determining whether someone in the top six falls, falls, mm -hmm. and then whoever in the bottom six could take that position. Um, who that would be determining based upon their last three Ooh. matches. Um, so everybody has made their picks here. It is. Yeah. Lisa, let's get started with you. Who has the toughest path? San Diego Wave has the toughest path. Um, although they're at the top of the standings and they sit number two right now, we have to remember in the global game of football, there's an international break coming up. So San Diego will be without huge superstars. Alex Morgan, defender Naomi Gurma, Kaylin Sheridan, Jaden Shaw, the attackers, mm. Jakobsen, M Melanie Barcenas. They're missing so many players. And San Diego takes on Portland at Portland, then they travel to Wakeman to take on North Carolina Courage, and then their last game is against Racing Louisville. So the first two specifically, being on the road against the Thorns and then against the Courage, I just don't know how easy it's going to be for San Diego to ride out the rest of the season with those three games, especially missing so many of their big players during Ooh. this international break. What a great point. Jordan, take us through yours. Okay, I'm going the other side of the, the coast. Washington Spirit, this is a team who has not won a game in seven games in NWSL. They are on this skid. They were at one point number one in NWSL standings, but since then, it has not gone well for the Spirit. They've switched tactics, but they are not getting the results. They play Kansas City Current, who just beat San Diego, the number one team last weekend in away from home. So they play Kansas City at home. Then they go across the country to OL Reign, which mm -hmm. OL Reign, is not sitting in a good spot either. So mm -hmm. they are going to be desperate for points. And then they play 
North Carolina Courage. This is a difficult run here for Washington Spirit and a team who there's a lot of expectations with their roster that they should make the playoffs. And I don't know. I don't know if they will. Oof. Darian, take us through yours. You went West Coast, you went East Coast. I'm going to go in the middle. Oh, I'm going nice. Houston. I think Houston has the toughest road. They're without their head coach. They have an interim head coach right now. And I just think they've had, they haven't had the best attacking season. They've really struggled scoring goals. And they're about to play some gritty teams. Gotham being one of them, that's their first game um, away. Then they go to Angel City. And another gritty mm -hmm. team who I think is scoring some goals. They're in good form. They haven't lost in a while. And then to Orlando. My pride girlies, we never know what's going to happen, <laughs> but I think that they love the pressure. The last few games, they just showed out with their last game, got a win, 2-1. to one. Um, I think Houston, it's going to be a tough three games for them to come together, and uh, they're a little iffy with their coach right now, and just kind of finding their groove once again that we saw at the beginning of the season. They have a hard time scoring goals. I know they just came off of a win. I feel like they looked more like what we expect from Houston in this last game than we have before. Against First, we, we saw an Ordonia's header goal, which we have not Finally, seen all season. And we saw that time and time again last year. Sanchez was on fire, felt free in this different role. Uh, there was more freedom to the way that she was playing. So I don't know how hard their road is, but I do feel like they they can handle it right now is where they're at in this mm. season. This is so interesting, guys. We have all four picked different teams. Who do you have? <laughs> I have the Portland Thorns. Even though they're number one, their run-up is really difficult. They're playing against San Diego Wave in the second place. Uh, they're playing against Gotham in third place right after. And then they have Angel City, who are you know right at the edge, trying to fight for a spot in, in eighth place. So for me, that's that's tough. Yeah. I mean, yes, they're number one. Yes, they've shown their dominance, but that's a, that's a tough run-up. Honestly, this was so hard to pick <laughs> <Yeah>. because, <laughs> because ev no game is easy. No week is easy across mm -hmm. the end of USL. You, we just saw it. Kansas City, number 12, <laughs> just beat San Diego, number one. It's it's not a walk in the park for any of these Throw teams. The predictions, so it, right? yeah. yeah, it's impossible to pick. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's move on to the next question because if someone – in the top six currently falls out who would it be and who would take their spot lisa get us started oh well rain i don't think that Ooh. they are making it to the playoffs they have had a really tough stretch over these last several weeks um and really what they haven't been able to do consistently on the pitch because yes they're creating chances but it's a tale as old as time for oh rain they can't finish they can't find the back of the net it's crunch time for megan rapino right now these are her final three games that she will be playing uh, ever before she retires there's a sense of urgency there and desperation that isn't falling in favor of OL rain mm. because teams are capitalizing on that desperation and it, they're easy to figure out when they are able to do that they just traded away Fallon Tullis Joyce their name state goalkeeper so they're a little shaky in the back line this is a team that had high lofty goals to win the shield win the NWSL championship and I don't even think they're making the postseason wow who is for them Orlando Oh, oh, my Orlando goodness. Pride. I'm just Number gonna skip seven. you guys there because that's exactly my <laughs> pick, Lisa. We didn't know. So and by the way, you guys, we don't share these picks so that we get live reactions on air. Those are exactly yes. my picks for uh, those exact reasons. Although Orlando Pride is sitting number seven, it's not that that crazy of an idea for them to push through and push forward. But they play at Angel City, they play at Louisville, and then they play against Houston. Um, and they were able to get this huge 2-1 win over North Carolina without their goalkeeper, Adam Morehouse. She was serving her red card mm -hmm. suspension. They, the way that Orlando was able to dominate in this game with Ali Watt getting the opening goal, Adriana getting one, I think Orlando's going to make a run. They'll knock out OL Reign. I think a few other teams are going to be knocked out as well, but that is my, my team to go. I want Allie Watt starting. I love Adriana up front. Their counterattack ability is incredible. Jordan, your but they, picks. They can also play through the lines. That's one of the reasons that I'm choosing also Orlando Pride to Ooh. make a playoff spot. But I have two teams not making it. Ooh. OL Reign are not making the playoffs, so I'm with you guys on that. And the Washington Spirit are not making the yep. playoffs. For the things that I just said, they are, have not won a game in seven matches. I like the concepts of this 4-3-3, but when they go forward, it is not as decisive as we need to see from Saar, Rodman, Hatch, Sanchez. Those four players, you, you're, you should be expecting goals every single game and a lot of goals. And there has been this lack of uh, dynamic play in the attacking third. So... I feel like, and struggle defensively. I think mm -hmm. um, Boutel has come in as an outside back and just looks like 
uncomfortable at the right back, and we saw Gotham take advantage of that over, yeah. the, over the weekend. So those are my two teams that are not making it. Orlando's making it. And I have, who else did I pick that's making it? Oh, Ooh, well, of course. Pick. Angel City. Oh. You know what? I picked Angel City. We dress alike and we think alike. Oh, yeah, Because we do. I also had Spirit dropping out mm -hmm. for those exact same reasons. And watching the game, I just felt they... Lackluster. Lackluster, a little unmotivated. Their front line looked like everyone had different ideas going forward. And Trinity was, credit to Trinity, she was all over the pitch. She yeah. was in her own 18. She was in the attacking 18. She was trying to get on the end of crosses, trying to make something out of literally nothing. Um, still looked dangerous. Kudos to her. But I think that's really all that the spirit had going into this game. Hatch was really quiet. She didn't get much of the ball. Um, and then moving forward, Sanchez got, came out in the game. So that's a big loss for spirit if she's not healthy and able to come in for their next few matches. Um, and then I also have Angel City, number eight, coming yes. into the playoff spot. I think that they've been really good. They have a really good team mentality right now. They're, different people are scoring goals. Um, they're creating a lot of chances. I think they have their style of play that's really working for them. And I can see them coming to this playoff spot and making a run for it. Wow. I like Incredible. that. Incredible. Yeah. So there's, there's a couple, you know, Similar thoughts there. A couple similar thoughts yeah. here. Yeah. Very interesting. I had Washington. I have Washington. Well, Jordan broke the rules because well. she picked two teams and two teams, and that wasn't part of the game. <laughs> well, okay. I, 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 like to, I like to do things a little differently, right? <laughs> I think I said two teams the last time as well. Who's going to make the playoffs? And I was like, Orlando and Louisville? Uh, that was so interesting, though, because we'll see how things shake out, and then we'll mm -hmm. come back to this moment and decide, you know, who is foreseeing or predicting things Nothing. better. Because we should have, we should have made a wager. We should have put something on this. If we don't do good late. with wagers on this show, we lose them. Um, <laughs> I feel like and we don't make good on back. them. Yeah. And we don't make good on them. <laughs> we're gonna look back and be like, of course, everything we said was wrong because this yeah. season in yeah, NWSL is absolutely bonkers, and we're here for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be talking the women's international break when we come back. You're not gonna want to miss it. The road to the Women's Gold Cup will be live on our networks as well as the CONCACAF Olympic qualifiers between the Canadian women's national team and Jamaica. Be sure to tune in to all of the action. For the road to the Women's Gold Cup, Lisa, Mexico against Puerto Rico. You're looking out at that match. Yes, I, I like this matchup. You look at this Mexican side that didn't qualify for the, the World Cup in back-to-back -back World Cup. Uh, cycles. This is a team desperate to get back uh, on the map at the international level. It, the players that are called in, specifically in the NWSL, Maria Sanchez, Diana Ordonez, two players with Houston Dash that had combined for a goal, the game winner for Houston this weekend on crosses and plays into the box. And against Puerto Rico, the, these sides know each other very well. They most recently played this summer um, in the Central American and the Caribbean games, and Mexico dominated four goals against this Puerto Rican side. They have to keep that up um, to continue this stretch and this run. I think Liga MX Femenil in Mexico, the domestic league, has helped this national team, but now can they utilize those players and their experience to make this national team of Mexico one to be feared in CONCACAF? And they need to continue those types of score lines mm -hmm. because otherwise this game gap is going to continue to increase and CONCACAF is not the same without a competitive Mexico in it and I feel like we need this Mexican women's national team to get back on track to being a rival to some of these big names within CONCACAF. Yeah, there's a lot of changes that have been made with that national team since uh, the W Championship that we covered that determined who went to that World Cup. So it's going to be interesting to see how they turn up. Uh, Jordan, Haiti against Costa Rica. Yeah, I'm going two teams that we just saw in the World Cup, very different paths in the World Cup. I felt like Haiti played some really inspirational soccer, losing by narrow score lines, and then Costa Rica struggled. They get one goal in the tournament, but it was not what we had, would expect from Costa Rica. The last, two, the last time these two teams met, um, it was a really decisive win by Costa Rica. And I think the tables have turned slightly. Costa Rica almost desperate, I think, to feel like they can compete again because they haven't shown that over the last not a few years in CONCACAF and really now on the world stage. And this Haitian squad with Dumave, uh, Judy, the, they're an exciting team who can get after you and create um, 
attacks from good defensive action. So I think this is going to be a really good matchup, and we're going to see a lot of these Haitian players in, in the spotlight. I love watching Haiti play. I know. I love it. They've got a nose for the goal. They have fun while they're playing. They are on creative. The fear. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, Darian, we picked games from uh, between Canada against Jamaica because they were in the World Cup, and mm -hmm. so much has happened um, during that World Cup that determined a lot for the team. So will Canada be able to bounce back from their performance in the World Cup? Will Jamaica continue to show the progress that they have made as a country? Uh, what do you think? You know, I think this should be a redemption match for Canada. I hope they come in feeling like they need to prove something like for themselves because that World Cup was such a letdown for coming off of winning the Olympics to then that. And I think Jamaica, they came in and I don't think anybody expected much from them mm -hmm. in the World Cup and they showed out. So I think building on that success that they had in the World Cup, playing against Canada, I hope we see Khadija Shaw get on the scoreboard um, because we didn't get to see too much of her in the attack in the World Cup. Um, it'll be a really good challenge for Canada and Jamaica. I think these teams are actually very equal levels. Yeah. Um, so it'll be a good game. It'll be fun to watch. And I think my money's on Jamaica. Me too. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's really interesting because both of these teams have, you know, certain disputes with their federation. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see how they've progressed those disputes or what is happening moving forward. But also just to play. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the best part of playing a game is you just get to play. And like you don't have to think about those things for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll be a really, like, like you said, they're, they have got a chip on their shoulder. We'll see how they perform. I think it's interesting, though, because it's determining how the Canadian Federation has performed on different levels because of their disputes with the money and that, those aspects. But just a reminder, we will not be having Attacking Third on Wednesday, so we will see you back on Friday. Please be sure to be here with us as we preview those matches.